A town is full of buildings, some tall, some short, some wide, and some narrow. The buildings are flats and houses and factories and shops. They're built in streets. The streets have cars and buses and lorries driving along them. A river runs through the middle of the town. The river has large boats and small boats on it. There's a bridge across the river so that the cars and buses and lorries can get to the buildings on the other side. The cars and the buses and the streets are full of people. In fact, there are a lot of people in a town. Do you live in a town? Mary? Mungo? and Midge live in this town. They live with Mary's mother and father in this tall block of flats. They live right at the top. There are eight flats built on top of each other. Mary, Mungo and Midge live in the flat with the flowers growing in the window box. There's Mary. There's Mungo. And there's Midge. Mary, Mungo and Midge have a large sunny room to play in. A room full of games and toys and picture books. Mary's always very busy. She's always got something to do. Today she's writing a letter to her grandmother to thank her for a birthday present. Mungo is helping her. He's a wise old dog, so old and wise that he can usually help Mary with whatever she's doing. He's holding the paper down to make it easier for Mary to write. Mary's other friend is Midge Mouse. He's usually very difficult to find because he's very small and runs very quickly. He's very inquisitive. That means he's always trying to find out things. What does he want in that toy lorry? Ah, his flute. Midge likes music. He likes it so much that he's learned to play a flute but he only knows one tune so far. You listen. I wish that mouse would learn another tune. At least we know where he is. Where he was. I wonder where he is now. Still here? Good. Now you're here, will you help me too? Will you stick the envelope down for me? Just lick the shiny bit, and it will get sticky. What a funny taste. I'll have to help you now. What's an envelope for, anyway? You stuck my letter inside it. Now I'm going to write my grandmother's name and address on it, so the postman will know who to give my letter to. Why does a postman have to give it? Why don't you give it yourself? Silly mouse. If Mary could give it, then she needn't write. She could just say thank you very much to her grandmother. But her grandmother lives such a long way away in the country that it's too far for Mary to go herself. So she's writing a letter instead. But if it's too far for Mary to go, how does it get there? Oh, don't ask so many questions. Now for the stamp. What's a stamp for? Oh, Midge. Mungo? Don't get cross with Midge. He's only small and quite young. A stamp is very important, Midge, because it's a way of paying the post office people, like the postman, for all the things they do, so that the letter gets to the person it's being sent to. Mungo, will you stick it on for me, please? It's stuck on Midge. You silly mouse. Just a moment, Midge. That's better. Now, Mungo. Thank you. The stamp has to be stuck in this corner. I'll make sure it doesn't fall off. Now, Mungo and I will go and post it for you. The letterbox is just outside the flats where they live. 
but as they live in a flat right at the top of the building, they go down to the street by the lift. They have a special way of doing it. Goodbye, boys. Don't be long. <laughs> must remember to make sure the lift door is shut. But as usual, Midge was in too much of a hurry. He was already outside the flats, waiting at the letterbox. Oh, all right. You post the letter, Midge. It's very dark in there. Mind you, don't fall in, Midge. Midge? Midge, are you all right? Midge, you silly mouse. Midge soon got over the surprise of falling in, and then he got used to the dark. He could see quite a lot of letters and postcards. Hmm, interesting place, the inside of a letterbox. I like it here. I think I'll stay here and see what happens. So Mungo sat down near the letterbox and waited as well. Midge was enjoying himself so much, he didn't hear the postman arrive in his van. Mungo barked when he saw the postman clear all the letters out of the letterbox into his sack. And he barked louder when he saw Midge being cleared into the sack too. For that inquisitive mouse had decided to go with Mary's letter to see where the postman was going to take it. postman took it to the post office. Inside the post office, Midge had another good idea. He would stay with Mary's letter to make sure it reached her grandmother. He would also find out how a letter goes all by itself on such a long journey. Midge was very interested and very excited. In fact, he was so interested and so excited that he nearly got caught in the machine that makes a mark on each stamp. That must be the postmark, so that the stamps can't be used again. All the people in the post office were much too busy to notice Midge, so that when Mary's letter was put into a hole with other letters going to the same place, Midge was able to climb in with it. All the letters in Midge's hole were collected, and Midge watched them being tied in a bundle. The bundle and Midge were put into a bag. The bag was put into a van. The van took them to a railway station. And Midge and the letters were put on a train. When the train started, it was beginning to get dark. But it was even darker inside the post bag and very uncomfortable. At last, the bag was opened. Midge looked out. It was like the inside of the post office, except that he was still on the train. The postman reached for Mary's letter. No, Midge still hadn't been seen. The postman looked at the address on Mary's letter and put it into another hole. Midge watched it carefully. He really felt he was looking after it now. He wasn't sure how long he waited, but he knew that it was quite a long time 
because he was getting very tired and very hungry. Cheese! I can smell cheese! One of the postmen was eating a cheese sandwich. Some of the crumbs fell onto the floor. Oh, delicious! Oh, scrumptious! Oh, perfect! After that, Midge felt much stronger and fatter. He also felt rather sleepy. It was morning when Midge woke up. He wasn't in the train anymore. He was at a railway station in the country, in another bag, in another van. The van took him from the station to a much smaller post office in a village. Soon, another postman came and sorted out all the letters. Midge watched him. He thought the postman looked rather like Mungo. was there at last. He felt very pleased and proud as he stood on the doormat with Mary's letter. Mary's grandmother thought Midge was very clever to bring the letter such a long way. She gave him a special breakfast of cheese and cake crumbs and milk. Then Midge felt rather sleepy again and while he was asleep Mary's grandfather made a special box for Midge to travel home in. There was sawdust on the floor and more food and there were holes in the side so that he could breathe and see out. And there was a label that said, Mouse with great care. The box was put on a train and after that onto a lorry. The man from the lorry carried the box very carefully into the flats and knocked on Mary's door. One mouse for delivery to Miss Mary. Midge! Oh, Midge, you're back! Mungo, Midge is back! Mungo pretended not to be very interested, but he had been very worried. Midge had been away for two whole days. Oh, you're back. I suppose you're going to say that you took the letter to Mary's grandmother yourself. Yes, me and several postmen. How did you get there? Oh, by van and train, you know. Oh, and uh, then I went on a bicycle. What was the van like? Oh, not very interesting. I didn't bother to look. That means you couldn't see it. You were in the postman's sack. Uh, the train was very interesting. And postmen eat cheese sandwiches. Is that all you can remember? Of course not. I'll tell you all about it. And so he did. It was a very, very long story. But you and I already know it all, don't we? <laughs> <laughs>